shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. I said somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. I said somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Number three. Just that. Exploits of faith. Hear me. Faith is a gateway to territorial translation. It is an instrument that empowers us for transfer from one realm to another realm from one position to another position at least that is what I saw in the testimony of Enoch Hebrews chapter 11 verse 5 to 6 the Bible says by faith Enoch was taken away Enoch was taken away by faith. By faith. Who took Enoch away? Faith. Faith took him away. By faith. You can be taken away. From barrenness. To fruitfulness. From littleness. To greatness. From poverty. To prosperity. From retrogression. To progression. From the lowest place. To the highest place. Today. May faith change you. In the mighty name of Jesus. By faith, Enoch, you may be seated, was taken away so that he did not see death. A man of faith is not permitted to see certain things. From today, anything you don't like that you have seen, you shall never see it again. Somebody here shall never see miscarriage again. Somebody shall never register stagnation again. In the mighty name of Jesus. People, lift your right hand and shout a better amen. You may be seated. By faith, Enoch was taken away. So that he did not see death. And was not found. Question. Fuso. Who was looking for him? The Bible says he was not found. That means. Some fellows on earth. And went looking for him. We know where he is. He is on earth. At his house. They went there. They didn't find him. Faith had relocated him. Beginning this hour. When they come looking for you among marital strugglers. They will not find you among marital strugglers. When they come looking for you among financial strugglers. Sir, they will not find you on their list in the name of Jesus. When they come looking for you among singles. You know there are these guys that you, you were together with them in primary school. And the last time they heard about you is that you are still single. And then they, now they come back to look for, ah, you know, that, that Joanna, you remember, uh, we are with her in standard six. Now, uh, here she is still single. Now, by the time they find out, they discover that you have been married and you have twins. Hey, hallelujah. Who has been looking for you in wrong places? I decree. They shall not find you there. They shall not find you among marital strugglers. They shall not find you among ministerial strugglers. They shall not find you among the sick. They shall not find you among the stagnated. In the mighty name of Jesus. Please, can I hear a better shout of amen? Amen. Tell your neighbor if you don't see me, it's because I have changed the level. If you don't see me, it is because I have changed level. Yes, 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 yes. Ooh. 
Sit down, let me tell you a story. There was a couple that was always quarreling and fighting. And the neighbors got used. That at least, like almost every night, they were ready around 11 p.m. to pass five that particular marriage. It was, they were used. That that was a quarreling and contentious couple. But one day, they somehow visited church. And they both got born again. And there was no more fighting. One week passed. Two weeks passed. Neighbors came. To check. Have they traveled? All they are still around. They said, no, we are around, but Lefu has changed. I decree this hour. Your level has changed. Your position has changed. Your position has changed. It has changed for the better. It has changed for the better. In the mighty name of Jesus. People shout a better. Amen. You may be seated. Glory be to God. I said glory be to God. Hallelujah. Some years back, I think two years, if not three ago, I went to Blantyre. To our Zingwangwa church. And I was preaching like this. And the altar there, there is a window direct to the altar. And there is a path that people cross. And then when I looked through the window as I was preaching, I saw someone passing. I looked at him. I said, ah. I said, ah. I think I seem to know this guy. We were together in secondary school. He was passing. And he stopped. He looked at me. He opened his mouth wide. <laughs> and I think he was telling himself. That what? This boy? He is preaching like this? Surely level has changed. But we never talked. He went because I was preaching. A few weeks ago. He called. You remember you saw me? <laughs> and you know what he said? My friend. I need your prayers. I decree. Those who are not taking you seriously, they shall look for your help. They shall look for your assistance. They shall look for your intervention. In the mighty name of Jesus, people, can I hear a loud shout of amen? Amen. You may be seated in John chapter 1. Johanne 1, I think. Reading from 42 to 50 there. You see. <laughs> Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Now listen to me. There was a man. By the name Philip. Philip. Who had an encounter with Jesus. And he was so impressed. He said, wow. And he had the revelation that he was the Messiah. So he had a very good friend of his by the name Nathanael. And he went looking for Nathanael. And he found him sitting under a tree. And they began a conversation. This guy said, look, I have, we have found someone who is God the Messiah. Please, we need to join his ministry. There is no harm you encouraging your friends to join this church. Are we not teaching Bible? Are people not testifying? Uh, that's a good place. Hallelujah. Amen. Now hear me. 
Then Nathanael said, Why does the fellow come from? Nazareth? Can anything good come out of Nazareth? You should have told us about another place. Not Nazareth. And Philip said, boy, come and see. Come and see. Always invite your work colleagues, your neighbors, to come and see what God is doing in his church. Now, Topano, when Philip said, come and see, they started off to where Jesus was. And when Nathanael met Jesus, Jesus said, yes, that. Behold a true Jew in whom there is no guile or deceit. Nathanael said, Nathanael that. How did you know? He said, my friend, when Philip met you, when you are sitting under that tree, Philip, I already saw you. Ah! <laughs> the man said, my, now go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, down there. 49, quickly, 49. The man said, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Look at what Jesus said. Nathanael, is it because I said to you, I saw you under that fig tree. Do you believe? Now, we, you will see greater things than this. You will see greater things. You will see greater things. Is it because I told you I saw you under that fig tree? Are you not the one who was saying, can anything good come from now? Some of you, when people look at you, they don't give you any chance of attaining certain highest in ministry. Like me. Ah, I remember when my father and the Lord was inviting his colleagues to the church launch in 2010. Some big people, sir. They were saying, ah, 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 Apostle, you call him your son. Okay, go, you go. I thought you are the spiritual father. Go, go. Apostle, Some of them, when you caught them before he said anything, they said, I know you want to invite me to the launch of your your son's uh, ministry. No, 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 no. We, we cannot go there. And I met one big man who said, I understand you started a church. I know that you've not seen my face there. I'm waiting for the church to stabilize. So people have a way of scaling you and they put you where they are saying he cannot do it there is no way you know what the good news is in that they are only men they are not God <laughs> sir no matter what you say against me I will never spend a sleepless night once. Because you are only a man, you are not God. God specializes in using the despised things of the world. So if you, they are despising you, or if your size is a bit despising in their sight. You are the right candidate for divine lifting. I said you are the right candidate for divine lifting. Therefore, I decree be promoted. Be promoted. In your workplace, be promoted. In finances, be promoted. In business, be promoted. In your family, be promoted. In the mighty name of Jesus, somebody shout three times.
am I am promoted. I am promoted. I am promoted. I am promoted. Hallelujah. Amen. You may please be seated. By faith, Enoch. Did you cruel be Enoch? Was taken away. So I need faith for my relocation. I must believe that where I am is not my destination. I'm going to a better place. Number four. Out of five, quickly. Number four. I'm expecting that after this service you in New York shall sing a new song of joy in the name of Jesus hallelujah amen somebody in your marriage get ready for triplets and I'm a pastor I don't know which, which cup of God is talking to. Get ready, 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 get ready. Get ready, get ready. Get ready, get ready. I don't know who it is. But somebody will give you a house as a gift. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Please, can I hear a louder shout of amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You may be seated. We talk about us. Now hear me. Number four. Number four. Exploits of faith. Number four. Number four. It empowers the believer. To dare and be assured of things that have never happened before. It empowers a believer to dare things that have never happened before. And be assured of such things. Something doesn't have to be done because there is evidence of it. I will explain what that means. First of all, let us read Hebrews 11, 7. By faith, Noah. When he was told, hear me, of things not yet seen. Things not yet seen. That's right. Mm -hmm. Things not yet seen. That is one way of saying it had never happened. And that expression, it has never happened has different facets and dimensions. It has never happened in history. It has never happened in your family. Or it has never happened before in your life. So it depends on how you want to interpret it and apply it in your life. Is it making sense? But what we are talking about is something that has never been done before. Faith empowers us to dare the unbearable. To believe the unbelievable. To do the undoable. Something that when people look at you, they don't give you a chance of achieving it. But you crazily believe it. So 
Somebody said, Winner that. Another word for faith is R I S K. Risk. That's another word for faith. Risk that you take with God. Faith is a risk, sir. Can you imagine you are telling three million people? that will go around the city of Jericho once a day for seven days as if it is a medical dosage once a day for seven days on the seventh day seven times and then the priest will blow the trumpet and then all of you will shout and the walls of Jericho will collapse you must be very careful you may lose your teeth is it making sense? but you know that Joshua took that risk and the people also took the same risk the risk of believing what their leader said they did it you know what I did and in Hebrews chapter 11. Is that verse 28, 28, 29? Let's look at it. 30. Look at that, sir. Everyone read from the screen if you can. One, two, go. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell down after they were encircled for seven days. Faith is what collapsed the walls of Jericho. Faith. People believing. And who could believe after they were told of things not yet seen, they believed. It had never been done that a wall could collapse like that. But they believed that it was a possibility. In the time of Noah, there had been no flood whatsoever. And by the time God was talking to Noah, it had not rained for ages. People were born and people died without seeing a drop of rain. At that point, God came. Said, Branoah, let's talk. A flood is coming. Begin to prepare the ark. Number one, God, I have never seen flood. I don't know how it looks like. But in that verse number seven, verse seven, the Bible says, Bible when Noah was divinely warned. No, what a change is a new mulungu of things his eyes had never seen. Zazin Zubene Maswaka and Alasa does one. The Bible says, Bible goody, he was moved. I just soon tick up into action. Kukita Pogant was moved into action. I just soon tick up with Gilachito. And you know, he waited for about 100 years. In Ugutsu, that did not Saka 100 before the flood came. Chikumula, Chisada Bede. How long have you waited? That you're already complaining. I'm asking you, woman, how long have you waited? Some of you, your answer is six weeks. Pastor, Habusa, not Pastor, Papa, Papa. Papa. I have waited six weeks. six. God is not answering. <laughs> Papa, 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 papa. You know when some people see papa, they behave like papaya. They just cry. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. I said somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me say this. There are men of us. If God told us today. That we would be billionaires. Wouldn't believe it. Because there is no physical evidence. To suggest that 
Anything like that can be a possibility. But let me ask you. Do you think when you were five years of age, anybody thought that you could be a mother that you are today? A man with three children. And directing the affairs of your family. Telling your children, hey, switch off the TV. Switch off. Switch off. Switch off. Switch off. Switch off. It's time to sleep. Do you think at five? Anybody thought you could be anything like that? That should make you believe that if there is something God is speaking to you, no matter what is happening now, it shall come to pass. I said it shall come to pass. I said it shall come to pass. I said it shall come to pass. In the mighty name of Jesus. Believe you me, you may be seated. Nobody knew, including me, that I would stand before people like yourself to minister like I'm doing. But that which was not yet seen is now a reality. Anything, anywhere in your life that you desire for manifestation, that you desire for breakthrough, that you desire as a testimony, no matter how far fetched, it doesn't matter how distant it seems to be, in a matter of time. It shall be in your hand. I said it shall be in your hand. I'm not joking with you. I said it shall be in your hand. I said it shall be in your hand. You, shall be in your hand. you believe that shout a louder amen. Amen. I said it louder amen. Amen. And therefore I decree. Somebody listening to me shall be a billionaire. Somebody shall be a billionaire. Somebody shall be a billionaire. In the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody shall be a head and not a tail. You shall be above only and never believe. You shall have companies. You shall employ many people. 20 people. 80 people. 120 people. 180 people. 230 people. 450 people. 900 people. 1,500 people. And 1,000. In the mighty name of Jesus. You know, like this church, in a few years from now, we are going to be among the largest employing church in this nation. Wait. Wait. I know some of you are saying, look at you. Wait. 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 You see it. Do you know that there are churches in this world that employ 30,000, 40,000 people in their organization? Yeah. Because these are churches that will be running universities apart from the pastors. university. You know, like the redeemed Christian Church of God. In Nigeria alone, within Nigeria, mm. they have, I think, over 50,000 churches. Each one of those has a pastor. Nigeria, that is 50,000 pastors. Nigeria, apart, from, Busa, 50, apart from missionaries that are in other countries. Apart from the pastoral workforce, they have universities and secondary schools. And colleges. They have hospitals. Wait. You haven't seen a rich church yet. I decree this. You. And you. 
Dino. And you. Dino. And you. Dino. And you. Dino. And you watching me over the internet. Dino, you shall be a surprise to your generation. I said you shall be a wonder to your generation. You believe that shout amen three times. Amen. 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 Sit down, please. Kalibas. That was number what? Number four. Anyway, let me give you the last one. I have so many, but let me give you the last one. <laughs> Number five. Number five. Exploits of faith. Now we are on exploit. Number five. Faith. 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 Is a strength supplier. A connector. A qualifier. Or call it a bridge. That is what faith is. Faith is a strength supplier. A connector. A qualifier. Or a bridge. Hebrews 11 verse 11. Hebrews 11 verse 11. By faith, Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed. So yima kalandimwana. Ajeo amadi so kuima. Amadi wa yima. Did you enjoy it? Ndeo da maenda. Wa yima. Very powerful language. Amen. By faith, Sarah also received strength. To conceive seed. So And she bore a child. When she was past the age. Though she was barren. Though she had past the age of childbearing. Though she was very old, through faith, Sarah received strength to conceive. She received the ability to conceive. Through faith, she received divine enablement to achieve something that she did not qualify for. If your womb is dead and you have reached the stage of menopause, then humanly speaking, you don't qualify to have a child. But faith came and qualified her. Faith said, I'm aware of the deadness of your womb. I'm aware of your weakness. You have gone past the age of childbearing. But I came to give you strength that despite your age, you can still have a baby. Despite the politics at your workplace, you can still get your promotion. Ay, ay, ay. 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 So in that sense, Faith must be called a bridge. A bridge. There was a gulf between the baby that Sarah needed and herself. The gulf was her barrenness. Her menopause. Her old age. But faith came to Sarah. 
Mama, what is happening? Mama, I can't have a baby. Because my womb is dead. What else? I have reached the stage of menopause. Anything else? I am old. I first said, Give me your hand. Let's go. Let's go. I will escort you to your Isaac. I will escort you to your laughter. I will escort you to your celebration. I don't know what you are denied in life. I don't know what they said you cannot handle. You cannot have. By faith I announce. Acquire it. Acquire it. Acquire your baby. Acquire your promotion. Acquire your scholarship. Acquire your house. Acquire your healing. Acquire your car. Acquire your dusty man. Please jump on your feet, everybody. And give the Lord a shout of praise. Before I said, jump on your feet. I said jump on your feet and give the Lord a shout shout of praise two minutes before we pray how do I build my faith pick up your writing materials number one write this is a quick list Insight and revelation. You can't build your faith without insight and revelation. Faith is sourced from the word of God. In Romans 10, 17. In Genesis 15, verses 1 to 6. When Abraham was given that revelation. That actually he could have children. As many as the stars in the sky. When that revelation came, the man believed. Verse number six, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Insight and revelation. Expose yourself constantly to the word of God. By reading the Bible, reading spiritual books, and listening to teachings. Number two, godly fear. You can't build biblical faith without godly fear. We saw that. In Noah. Hebrews 11, 7. Hebrews 11, verse 7. The man acted on what he was told in godly or with godly fear. If you don't fear God, you can't act on his word. Godly fear means you must be a hater of sin. Proverbs 8 and verse number 13. Be someone who fears God. Because to fear God is to hate evil. And that is how Joseph lived his life. He feared God. And therefore he hated evil. Genesis 42, 18. Genesis 42, verse 18. I fear God. Genesis 39. Genesis 39. Verse 7 to 9. Verse 7 I can't commit adultery. No. Godly fear. Men of faith are men of godly fear. Number three. 
you build faith through obedience. Romans 10, 17. Romans 10, verse 17. Faith comes by hearing. The first hearing has to do with information, insight, and revelation. And then it says, and hearing by the word of God. The second hearing is the hearing of application or obedience. And then it says, Abraham, a man of faith, was a man of obedience. Abraham, a man of faith, was a man of by faith, Abraham obeyed. Abraham, Number four. Number four. You build your faith by judging God faithful to His promises. By judging God faithful. By judging God faithful. Have a strong conviction in your heart. That God can not lie. Yeah. Hebrews 11, 11, isn't it? Ah, Hebrews 11, verse 11. Mm. What was the foundation, my God, of Sarah's faith? Look at it. She judged him faithful. That is what emboldened her faith. This God is faithful. Look at Romans 4, 21. The same was true of the faith of Abraham. He was fully convinced that what God had promised, he was also able to perform. Very convinced. Very convinced. Lastly, number five. Number five. Boldness coupled with risk taking. Boldness and risk taking. If you believe the words of Jesus, who is walking on water, and you're asking him, Lord, if it is you, can you tell me to come? And then he tells you to come. If you believe that it is God talking to you to come. To come to him on the, on the water. Then you can't remain in the boat. Sir. You must take that bold step coupled with the risk of stepping into the water. What if I think the God you believe has called you will rescue you? <laughs> you are but modern day believer, sir. If Peter was a modern day believer, you know what he would have done? When Jesus said, Come. Yes, he would have gone into confessions. I am coming. In the name of Jesus. I am coming. While still in the boat. Six months. I am coming. In the name of Jesus. I am coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm there. I'm there. Ah. No, sir. I. No, sir. I. After you have confessed, take a risk. A bold step of risk. Step out. 
Is it making sense? I said, is it making sense? I said, is it making sense? Like one woman was hearing me preach on radio. Married for several years, no child. And according to her testimony, she said, Pastor, Abusa, you said, that I must demonstrate my faith. That is what you said on radio. By walking in my house. Like a heavenly pregnant woman. And should, you said we should be making confessions. I am pregnant. I am pregnant. But I should also be walking like a pregnant woman. Pastor, when you said it, I laughed. I said, how can I be working like this? So I didn't do that part. I was just confessing. Three months passed. Nothing happened. And then I remembered. That pastor said I should also demonstrate. So I started demonstrating. Morning. Mamawa. Pregnant woman. Evening, Mazuro. I'm a pregnant woman. The time she was testifying, she was heavily pregnant. Do you know why so many people don't like faith? It is because in faith, you are given instructions to carry out. And most of those instructions are crazy to a logical mind. So for example, I can imagine that this is a, an educated woman who went to the university for example. And then you are telling her to walk like pregnant. Ah. Are you okay up there? Is your medulla oblongata working? Why are you working like that, woman? No, pastor said I should be demonstrating that I'm a pregnant woman. So because so many of us are gentlemen and gentlewomen, we, we don't like that nonsense. But some of us who have no name and who have nothing to lose. When Jesus says walk like a pregnant yes, woman, we just go ahead. Whether you laugh at us, you are just wasting your oxygen. <laughs> hey! Hallelujah! Amen! I said hallelujah! Amen! A certain woman was believing God for a child. She was perfectly barren. She was perfectly barren. Now, hear me. God spoke to her. He said, Adati, let me ask you, if you had a baby today, how much would have been your budget on your baby in terms of clothes and other accessories? She sat down, came up with the budget. I don't know how much it was. Certainly a big budget. And God said, okay, that amount, divide it into two. Take this half to that woman's baby. This other half to that woman's baby. After three months, the woman became pregnant. works by works. Did you hear what I said? Faith works by works. If you say you believe, the question you must answer is what am I doing to show that I believe? James 2.18 
Yakobo 2:18 I will show you my faith by my works. Don't just say you believe. What are you doing as proof that you believe it? Lift your two hands and give God thanks. Let's close. Lift your voice. Lift your voice. Appreciate him. Appreciate him. Appreciate him. Let's 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 appreciate him. Father, we give him Lord, we give him praise. Father, we give him glory. We worship him. We magnify him. We exalt him. We glorify him. We honor you. In Mark chapter 10, verse 51. Mariko 10, verse 51. Jesus asked Bartimaeus a question. Yes, Adam Fusa Patimeo Fuso. What do you want me to do for you? Ufuna in and Kuchiti Rejani. I don't know what would be the answer to that question for you. Jesus is asking you exactly that same question. Yes, You came for the mega Sunday service. Which is about to end. The host of the program is Jesus. He is asking you. What do you want me to do for you? I'm giving you one minute to tell Jesus what specific thing you want him to do for you. Lift your voice. Amen. Amen. How many are talking to the Lord? Lift your voice and talk to Him. Question number one, you are running down the way. That every request, petition, and desire expressed unto God is granted in the name of Jesus. Your testimony is released in the name of Jesus. Hear me. In 2 Samuel chapter 6. Verse 19. Verse 19. 
2 Samuel 6 verse 19. 2 Samuel 6 verse 19. Uh, when Israel gathered before the king, King David. Israel David. The Bible says, Bible before he released the people back home, he distributed among all of them the whole multitude, both the women and the men, to everyone. He gave a loaf of bread, a piece of meat, and a cake of raisins. Everyone went away at least with three items. Today we are not gathering before King David. We are gathering before King Jesus. How can we leave this place empty handed? No, sir. You are leaving this place with an avalanche of testimonies in the mighty name of Jesus your testimony is released your breakthrough is released your challenge is over your mountain is leveled your valley is lifted your crooked place is made straight in the mighty name of Jesus Good people, can I hear a louder shout of amen? Amen! I said a louder shout of amen. Amen! Your life shall never be the same. Your family shall never be the same. Your career shall never be the same. Your children shall never be the same. Your businesses shall never be the same. Your ministry shall never be the same. Your health shall never be the same. In the mighty name of Jesus. You know what? I see many, many opportunities coming to you. And may God give you eyes to see those opportunities as they come. In the name of Jesus Christ. I said in the mighty name of Jesus. Pastors. Pastors. May your churches grow in the name of Jesus. Go and work signs, wonders, and miracles. Nothing shall stop you. Nothing shall stop you. Now, concerning our children who are commencing, most of them, their studies tomorrow. I decree. Every one of them is protected. Every one of them is anointed for distinction. Anointed for excellence. None of them will be dull in class in the name of Jesus. I said in the name of Jesus. Good people, can I hear a louder shout of amen? Amen. Give the Lord a shout of praise. You need healing in your body. You look at the word of God concerning your healing. The possessing of your possessions is at the mercy of your confession. This hour that all is well with your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Lift your voice, let's appreciate the King of Kings. Father, we bless, honor, and exalt your holy name. Thank you, mighty God. Bless and be your holy name. Bless you, Lord. We give you the praise. We celebrate you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Glory in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Amen. How many of us will be looking forward to the next mega service? Give the Lord a mighty shout of praise. Somebody, as you'll be coming for the mega service, next time you'll be coming by your own vehicle.
In the name of Jesus. This week is your week of breakthroughs. Your week of good news. Your week of testimonies. Your week of divine connections. Divine connections. Financial surprises. Workplace favor. Business favor. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Anything evil. Programmed against you this week. I cancel it in the name of Jesus. You believe that? Shout a better amen. Amen. Please, resident pastors, when we close, Jump. hang around for a group photo. We need to take a group photo. Resident pastors. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Lift your two hands. Psalm 23 and verse number 6. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever 